So we'll start with a sit. We'll have a slightly different um, format to this morning, and that will include more time for any questions that you have. So um, just keep those on the back burner if, if you've got something bubbling away. And there'll be time a bit, a little bit later. But for now, if you'd like to just set up comfortable posture. I'll lead this practice quite lightly, lead, it, lead into it, and then let you Sorry, I have a little echo here, I'm trying to work out where it's coming from. <laughs> Seems to have disappeared. Okay, yeah, so then I'll uh, just um, leave you to, uh, yeah, practice a along the lines in which feels most, um, perhaps following your interest, following uh, that sense of what's needed in the moment, what's going to be helpful, depending on what you find what your experience is like and what the quality of the awareness is like. Starting in the usual way. Just sitting, just naturally coming to know what's happening through the senses. And sometimes there might be a, a natural settling towards one sphere of experience. Perhaps anchoring in body sensations. using sounds around you. as a way of helping anchor to your present moment experience. Or you might want to use touching thumbs as we did yesterday.
whatever helps anchor you to the present moment. In a way that also enables you to take in what else is happening. And if the mind already feels quite stable, quite relaxed, you can rest back with awareness in the present moment without any particular object. Allowing the attention to be free to go where it will. Where does the attention go when the mind is relaxed and at ease? Awareness can follow that thread of attention as it moves from sense experience to sense experience. very lightly touching into different sense experiences. A direct knowing or perhaps a sound or the knowing that seeing is happening. The direct knowing of a thought or an emotion. And at times, perhaps a glimpse of the awareness itself, the knowing quality of mind.
I'm not trying for any of this. I'm relaxing into what you notice. Noticing at times the relationship to different sense objects might be a simple recognition, an object arising in the mind in awareness. We might recognize some degree of wanting in relation to that object or not wanting and any of these relationships can be made into an object themselves being curious about wanting and not wanting in the mind how they think, how they feel. Or if the relationship is one of awareness, what are its qualities? Recognizing any ease, balance, interest or acceptance in the mind.
Does any anyone have anything they would like to say about what you noticed in that practice from your direct experience? Paul. Yeah, after you said about noticing aversion, I'd, I'd noticed I'd had a bit of a problem with my gum and there was a definite tendency to put a wall up. I'm not going there. I don't want to look at that. And after you said that, I think, well, no, I will. And it wasn't, it wasn't as painful as the mind was anticipating. It was quite interesting. Eventually it settled down. Then the awareness went somewhere else. There was something else that took that attention. So I thought that, that was uh, interesting. Great, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really good to, in, in a sense, realize that the mind might have a bit of an assumption about something and to check that out in, in the direct experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great, thank you. Suze. Hi, I just wanted to mention that um, what was happening for me was I was actually, I started getting involved in a story and I could feel me getting into grip. Um, and I remembered what you said about adding other things. So I slightly opened my eyes and looked at my thumbs and could hear outside and it, it definitely lessened it. And I was quite impressed by that. So yeah, I kind of, uh, yeah, working in practice really. Yeah, thank you. Great, great. It's, it's really good to um, start to, in a way, get a sense of the tools that we can use when we're not sort of at the mercy of what the mind does or e even when there's a story starting to build some momentum it's like there are there are, are, are ways of working with awareness that can um help us keep the initiative um yeah yeah and and that helps cultivate more mindfulness yeah great okay les hi all uh, yeah, also stories, um, persistent stories. And uh, again, as Sue said, um, use the tools, the thumbs and dual awareness, that sort of thing, and uh, really helpful. And um, you're getting me out of the story, but also allow me to look at the story with perhaps more creative solutions. Yeah, so that's really grateful. I'm really yeah. grateful for that. Thanks. Yeah, it's good. Great to hear. Mm. Anything else? Sawatanyana. Yes, I um, so the, my so the awareness sort of naturally went into investigating the mood and the mind, which is sort of yeah, that seemed to be quite persistent this morning. You know, tired, tired, and then the story: not slept enough, not slept enough, and um, it was. Uh, yeah, it was quite a lovely journey of that sort of opening up into sort of finding a different um, threads and experience or different tones of that wallpaper of the mind. Sort of some was um, a softness, a real softness in my being, a sort of a bit of an urge to curl up somewhere, but also just the softness um, and um, a sense of aliveness, the, the tiredness, you know, there being an aliveness in it or something. But then towards the end, um, I seemed to end up uh, with a different wallpaper. It was as if that, peel, that had peeled off and there was another one behind it. So then the sit was over. So um, yeah, I'm curious about the next one, <laughs> the paper behind the paper. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get a sense of it, sense of what it was? Um, a, a sort of a weird, um, a sort of blandness and a resistance to life or something so mm. something gray mm. and um mm. sort of this sort of there was something quite unpleasant um about it yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so something else being revealed through mm. initial mm. wallpaper yeah great thank you patricia yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't feel too well today, actually, unfortunately. But I did what I could, and um, it started off not so bad. And then something that's happened this morning um, crept in and wouldn't let go. So um, I, I brought my sort of awareness to it. And uh, and in the end, what I did, I held my hands in a soft position. And um, it really 
it did it sort of took it away um not completely but it took the edge off it and it sort of disappeared um into the background a bit and then something else popped up and uh but that wasn't as bad to deal with so um so totally aware there of what was happening so that really good that you could do that I did think of my thumbs in it but I somehow just held my hands around mm -hmm. each other like um like that and um that really worked as well so that was anchoring as well so um yeah that was really good today thank you very much anyway thank you <clears throat> great yeah 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 so you used the phrase um um actually i've forgotten the phrase that you used uh but the sort of in a way that that working working with and in a way just this for all of us not we're not working with things in order that they go away but mm -hmm. working with things so that they we're able to be more aware of them yeah. and for that it's not necessary for them i'm not saying that's what you're saying but that's that's just what it it's kind of letting it be it's okay just leave it there it's gonna it's gonna come there and but it kind of um softened it it really yeah. did soften it it was really good the way that i was able to do that and um i've been able to do that through the week with different things so it's uh it does it does work when we're able to do it and we have great. to think about yeah. it thank you anyway yeah great yeah and that sounds like that quite intuitive thing with your hands um really important to be able to sort of ch clock those little intuitions a sense of oh, what's helpful here what's going to be ah so that in a way that's a little bit like the hand fist but it's like you made it your own in the moment which uh, is lovely really lovely sometimes it might be the hand on the the heart or yeah yes some something else altogether but just that allows uh, awareness to support what's happening especially when it's it's unpleasant so lovely thank you such an andy um am i unmuted yes okay so um i was with something that i i've been with pretty much all the retreat um which feels quite a a deep and even a stuck pattern where there's really strong energy that feels like anger or rage or something like that, but a very, very strong conditioning as well, which is trying to keep that hidden and, and suppressed. Um, so it feels like conflicts in the mind. And with that comes a really heavy, tired quality, which is sort of not surprising because there's so much energy that's being held down. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, well, it is very, very unpleasant. It feels almost unbearable, um, which is sort of just like means really, really don't want it. So I, uh, I, I was just um, trying to be with it by, trying to recognize the well actually I, I recognize the quality of the aversion and I also recognized I think it's the Bob the Trishna I, I, I just didn't I just don't I just want to go to sleep I don't do not I do not want to experience have, mm. have to keep on experiencing mm. so I, I recognize those two things I kept trying to um not have that as the only focus so broadening out to um, visual sensations and sounds and there wasn't much in the body that didn't feel involved uh, but at the end of the day I want it to go away <laughs> yeah to go away yeah 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 yes yeah so in a way um that's what you have to keep recognizing isn't it there's and in a way just see how how regularly that comes up or, or what what that feels like coming up that that sort of energy of not wanting if we can relate to it as a sort of energy uh, yeah. uh not sort of identified with oh I, I shouldn't not want it to go away yeah <laughs> you know, yeah what's it what's it like for it simply to be an object arriving oh, um yeah yeah actually, actually i didn't quite get that that layer that would yeah okay that that would be good the because it feels like layers and layers and layers of aversion basically the bottom layer is aversion or anger and then there's 
that close them down, which is a version, and then there's a version to that, then there's a version to having, you know, it's just... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and sometimes when there's that sense of, I've had enough of this, just want it not to be here, um, there's that um, desire to sort of push through, which I was talking about with the hand fist thing yesterday. Right. Um, get this over with already. Yeah. <laughs> and and completely understandable, completely understand. And actually, often what what those sort of deep um, things need, those clenched fists, they they need. Okay. The, there's yeah. There's definitely sort of that aversion to it being there and you're still here you're still here close yeah, you're still here and somehow acknowledging that in whatever ways is possible you're still here these other things are here there's the sounds there's the sight whatever you're still here um yeah so tough, tough one yeah, yeah I, feel, I feel a bit tearful which is good it's sort of a mm. um a softer yeah 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 thank you yeah thanks okay chandra maitri hi hello hey um vatra devi on the first day you said accept the conditions you find yourself in and i found that extremely useful that sentence and I said it to myself every single day and uh, uh, it's not easy when I leave the room here and I always wish I was in a different place and I had better conditions because uh, since I'm not living on my own I'm not in really retreat conditions so um, I find the same wallpaper cropping up again and again. And I just want to know what I can do when I leave this room here. Mm -hmm. I, I guess um, notice, notice what happens, maybe even notice what happens as you think about leaving you mean in the literal room i'm just the, li the, literal yeah, the little room i'm, yeah. in, I'm here now little, when I, literal room, yeah. yeah so I'm in even, here yeah even that walk towards the door the opening the door be really present really present in what's actually happening the physical sensations the be be really mindful of your feet on the ground uh quite embodied uh as you make that transition between your space and leaving that space and what happens and see uh, take take mindfulness with you in those moments just to notice just to notice what what happens where the um, lack of acceptance comes up and how that manifests what it maybe hooks onto in the environment outside the room um, if you could get curious about that process um because i think acceptance comes on a moment by moment basis it's not something that we can sort of you know just do and that's it our experience is constantly sort of sifting like shifting sands and being sensitive to that yeah well i've got all the good intentions but uh, they very quickly fall by the way very often so yeah, there's a lot of starting again. I think there's a lot of okay, so um, lost awareness. But maybe there were a few more moments that you can recollect and think, okay, well, I got to the door. I got to the door, and I was aware. I was aware as I was aware yeah, of what was happening, yeah. grounding uh, in the senses and that sort of internal, maybe the feelings, yeah. uh, heart, the uh, thought. Um, so, so little by little, we we. Um, you know, we're able to sort of sustain more, but but a, a lot of mindfulness practice for us all involves just starting again. So, yeah. Okay, completely, completely uh, lost it. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. mindful at all. What's happening now? 
and that's the beauty of it that the present moment is always there oh, what's happening yeah. now mm. forget about the rest in a way mm. just right here right now thank you mm. thank you great thank you everyone um okay so i want to touch into an area that's come up in questions um a couple of times this week questions that um, i've received i they haven't come out in the in the group um, as yet and and then it will, it'll just be open to a bit more um, general questions um, if there aren't so many questions then there's there's uh, something else I often talk about it at this time of the um, retreat and that's more to do with working with our, our um, our home conditions in, in, in you know when we're um, when we're reading when we're looking at we're working on the computer those sorts of things a bit more um, I know some of you have had we've well we've all had to do that to some extent being on an online retreat there's a bit more I could say uh, but the the territory I wanted to talk around I had a couple of questions around um, this relationship between attention and awareness or mindfulness. Uh, and I've, I've just led into it in retreats a, a number of times, um, but, but uh, yeah, the questions were around um, what, what, is, what is that relationship? Um, what's the difference between them? Uh, so let's see, let's see if I can um, make that make that clear uh, so i think i did mention that that uh, attention is is one of these factors of mind it's quite a subtle factor of mind that's part of a group uh called the omnipresent mental events so they're they're always always present and they're, they're part of how um we we sort of um how we how we how we find objects if you like how we um make sense of our world the omnipresent mental events um so as mindfulness becomes stronger and more a more continuous factor in the mind it becomes possible to to um notice these more subtle factors uh of both of the omnipresent mental events and also of the scandals. there's quite a strong overlap um between the those two two groups and we went into this um those of you that were on the online retreat i did this time last year i think we were looking at the scandals um so so it, it's it's those those factors uh, both the scandals and the omnipresent mental events they sort of make up um well, I've got two metaphors. Uh, one might appeal to some and, and def not to others. So it's sort of like the operating system of our body minds. Um, it's sort of ha how, uh, what's going on behind the scenes, what's going on, what, what sort of um, the, the beginning of the process where we end up being able to um, see and recognize um, flowers in the garden, or hear and know that's a um, a bird singing, or, or whatever it is. So there's the whole sort of perceptual process that starts right at the beginning with these subtle mental factors. So operating system is one way to talk about it. The other way I thought about to talk about it is this universe within, our universe within, and usually we're looking sort of outwards. Um, developing the metaphor on the fly. May, maybe we're in our sort of spaceship, and we're, you know, we're either looking looking out um, towards uh, maybe the maybe the uh, process is breaking down already. We're looking out, or that universe is within. Uh, we can sort of, in a way, turn the lens around and look within about how we're creating our world. Um, and within that, there are some sort of uh, that that universe within the mind, body, heart. There are sort of more obvious planets or stars of um, 
uh, things that are, are heard, are seen, are, are felt and touched. And there are various mind objects, the different emotions, the different thoughts going on. And then there are, in, within this universe, there are, are, are sort of, if you like, so smaller, sort of subtler um, planetary thingies, uh, mental factors. And these, these more subtle ones are, are connected with the skandhas, connected with um, the omnipresent mental events. So that's the, that's the overall framework. Um, but I, I used attention quite early on in the retreat. In fact, I think it was one of the first um, meditations that I led. Um, and that's because because it's it's always happening. And if we are relaxed, it is relatively accessible to us to see this this little movement of mind that perhaps we don't usually notice, or maybe we notice. Oh, I'm thinking uh, about this, or I'm looking at that. Um, what that process of following attention can do is, is just see those movements, see the way the mind moves, see how attention moves. And it moves uh, in a way that's it's conditioned, it's conditioned by our previous um, interactions, our previous actions. Uh, it goes where it's gone before, if you like moves around and it's, it's also it's conditioned by responding to um, movement in the visual field say or um, you know we, we, we see a, a movement and the eye moves towards it or the head moves towards it um, so it's in a sense it's quite automatic it responds quite automatically to different sort of stimuli uh, it's conditioned in that way. And, and like these other mental factors, um, it has a job to do and attention's job is to attend. It sort of uh, seeks out things, it seeks out depending upon what's what stimulated uh, it. When we bring awareness to that process, if you like, awareness has the, the bigger view attention as i say is conditioned to to go and in this quite automatic way um mindfulness and right view um are also uh, conditioned and we're conditioning them as we practice them um but they their job uh, has a slightly bigger scope or a lot of a bigger scope rather than simply to attend to um, you know, the objects that have um, being noticed in the different sense spheres. Um, its job is to be aware with uh, this Dharma perspective, be aware through the lens of right view, the lens of the Buddha's teaching. So it has a has a more of an an overview. It's able to notice. Uh, attention, um, notice a variety of other things. Um, and actually, it can notice whether if where attention is going is helpful to practice or not. Uh, so this is where the sort of interplay of undirected attention uh, and directed attention can can come into being. Uh, we can allow the mind to go where it goes, allow attention to go where it goes in a natural way. Um, but perhaps it goes towards worrying about um, something, maybe a, a painful interaction with someone, and uh, it's contributing that sort of worrying um, brings in particular types of thoughts, it brings in contraction in the body. Um, um, it conditions uh, aversion in the mind. So actually it sort of 
taking us in a bit of a, um, a downward spiral. So what awareness can do is, is recognize awareness and what right view working together, recognize, uh, is, this, is this helpful for the growth of awareness? Um, this particular getting sucked into this, this object that attention has drawn me to. Uh, and so if you like awareness and right view give, give choices about, actually this is not, so helpful in the moment the mind's getting a bit overwhelmed uh, let's rest with the breath let's look out of the window uh, for a little while let's be aware of the thumbs touching um, so awareness and and right view together have a have the bigger picture um, and they're always looking to um, what's helpful to, to help awareness grow? What's helpful to grow the factors of right mindfulness? Because that's their job. Um, so in a way that we're always looking to, uh, yeah, the function of mindfulness is to help mindfulness uh, grow in the mind. So mindfulness notices and consciously looks um for for what else is happening um, we can do that through something like the the and practice and sound is happening and uh contact between the bottom and the cushion and um sensations in the belly or the chest are happening I hope that makes it um, a bit clearer or gives it a little bit more context. Um, in a way, the, the, the difference, the, the sort of quite limited capacity of attention. And yet it's quite a good object. It's quite a good object to, to recognize and to, to be able to see the process of the mind um, moving. Um, yeah. So any any thoughts about that or any questions about that? Nan. Nan. Oh hello everyone. Um thank you very much for this morning and the meditation and the meditations throughout the week. Um You've just referred to something which was on my mind, thinking about um, how I create, through my thoughts, I create a world of my own, if you like, through my mind, and um, how the thoughts can be uh, very, very prominent. So um, through this, th through the thinking, I've noticed throughout the week that my thoughts tend to have, uh, and certainly thoughts which are related to some sort of low anxiety, do tend to recede and become weaker through the meditation process. It's almost as if they're one person removed or in some way less rather than being strong thoughts right at the front there. They seem to recede, which is always very helpful. Um, it does seem to settle. The thinking process does definitely seem to settle and I seem to then be able to have, if you like, a different relationship with that, with that mental state, which is, can only be a positive, hmm. really a positive. Um, I just wanted to say that the, you were talking about nature and looking into the garden and earlier in the week, uh, there was a blackbird in the tree and I developed a complete relationship and story with this blackbird. It was quite fascinating. And it was something obviously that in my normal day-to-day -day life perhaps wouldn't occur. So there was a much greater awareness of things around me going forward. So um, I think in terms of, in some ways, it's like a thread. If you think of a ball of wool that, you know, you start off with a thread from a ball of wool 
And then through the creative process, it becomes an object. And this is how I see my mind at the moment in some ways, that there are these threads which I'm developing a new relationship with that object, if you like. Okay. And there we are. So I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but it's, it's very much uh, an ongoing process for me, obviously. Yeah, great. Um, there we are, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Len. Okay. So any um, either uh, thoughts or questions about what I've said or, or particular um, questions about uh, that, yeah, perhaps, perhaps something else that's, that's uh, either come up for you during the week or, or something I've said during the week and Les, you're there. Oh, yeah. Um, so stripping it back for my weary brain. Um, so if um, I, I, awareness is seeing attention is going to something negative, then we use the tools to, you know, the thumbs or the dual awareness to sort of give the brain a rest, or the mind a rest. I would, but, I would not do that too soon. In a way, it's, it's all about what, you know, in a way, we awareness um, has the capacity to be what with what's happening so we don't um we we don't too quickly think oh that that's a, a negative thing we we more go with curiosity with with uh, um what's this like we rec can recognize the the skillful or unskillful nature of a particular thought um we might um have a sense of the the suffering it creates in us or um or the sense of yeah yeah th that sort of relationship to it um mainly we use the sort of directing if if the mindfulness is not able to be with that object without getting overwhelmed so i'd put that proviso on it yeah yeah otherwise otherwise we just are likely to respond out of aversion oh there's something that the mind is calling negative got to move away from that it, it, it's more like can 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 mindfulness be with uh, that and and um explore uh through um uh, being willing to to rest with it and see if there's something that uh, the mind can understand oh so have you frozen or have thank you yeah Okay. Yeah, it did freeze for a while, but I think I heard most of that. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Mm. Eric. <clears throat> yeah, going back to to yesterday you talked about mood in the mind and if i heard it correctly you talked about it being part way from vedana to full-blown emotion yeah. i hope i hope i noted that correctly mm -hmm. you then mentioned that that you didn't think there was a, a pali or sanskrit word for it and that has surprised and to an extent confused me because I expected you at that point to to talk to say chitta because I've seen chitta described as mood. Mm. Now, is there a is there a difference here mm. between mood in the mind and chitta as mood? Yeah, no, good. I, I think chitta could fit quite well. Um, I think ch chitta's. Uh... It's, it's used in different ways. It is described in different ways. Sometimes much more specific than mood. But you, but I, but actually, you've reminded me that I do include it in the chitta section. When I used to follow the Satipatthana um, structure uh, more closely on my retreats, I would definitely include mood within chitta. So yeah, yeah, we could call it that. Um, 
Yeah. So it's it's yes. Often it's quite specific in the sense of the presence and absence of greed, hatred, and delusion, and noticing whether the mind's contracted or distracted. But you, you can see those as all having their own particular sort of moods in the mind. Yeah. So yeah. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Such an Andy. Um, you've talked about right view and wisdom, wisdom in the mind. Um, is wisdom a fruit of right view, or could, could you say something about the, the similarity or difference? Yeah, I think right view is is if you like the the perspective, the training sort of perspective to to help sort of get up and running in the mind um, alongside mindfulness um, and that allows things to be seen more clearly so if you like it allows um, aha moments or, or moments of clear seeing moments of insight or wisdom to to happen so i'd say it's it's i'm using it in the sense that it's it's of the it's more connected with the the conditions that allow and support wisdom. Um, yeah, I think yeah. There's probably also a, um, an argument for talking about it in a, the the way more closely to the way that Bhante talks about transcendental right view, which is more synonymous with um, insight and wisdom. So in a way, I guess that's when the, the right view perspective has just come become completely natural to the mind. It's no longer a training perspective. It's something that you don't have to check to see if it's they the, don't have to remind yourself. It's just the way that things are seen. So then it's 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 completely synonymous with insight and wisdom. So are you seeing wisdom as quite a high level? I'm seeing it on on different different levels actually. Um, when we looked at the uh, the three levels of my three levels of wisdom yesterday, I, I think um, there's a certain level of understanding from our, our reading and studying of um, the Dharma teachings, and then there's a, another level of um, understanding through putting the practice or putting the teaching into uh into into play in in the practice and experimenting and um then then sort of more momentary insights or clear seeings will come come and they'll probably go a lot of them but but there's there are different levels there are different levels of wisdom and then there's there are the ones that don't go and that perhaps are a deeper seeing yeah Uh, Maria Jose. Yes, good morning. Good morning. I have a question related to right view and something you've been talking, you've been talking all the time about right view <coughs> and effort and uh, a relaxed effort. And uh, I have made this connection that perhaps we need to have both things right view and right effort and i'm saying right effort as you know in a sort of dharmic sense and you relax effort is perhaps the right effort and yeah. uh, and uh, um and they have to go together so this relax effort have to go together but like like the right view um is something that you um it's, it's a training process and the right effort is also a training process i feel and and it it, it it takes time to 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 become to have that tension of relaxation yes yeah no i i, I completely agree I, I think that's why we sort of check the quality of the energy or the effort um because we want to be aware of 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 how um, in a way how we're relating to what's happening and it 
you know, it could be a habitual energy that's quite strong and too strong for uh, being able to receptively notice um, quite subtle things in the mind. Um, I, I do, so this particular practice requires quite a subtle uh, effort um, because of the nature of the practice. There's, there's other practices uh, where we direct the mind. Um, well, I think particularly when the mind is in balance, you can use quite strong uh, energy or effort and that's, that's appropriate. So it's the right effort to the right uh, situation. I, I don't think there's ever just one um, right uh, energy or right effort. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Serena. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm having a problem with aversion, very similar to the, uh, what you were talking, what was being talked about earlier, including the aversion to aversion, which I hadn't picked up before. Um, and I'm just wondering about the role of kindness in relation to aversion, which I hadn't heard. Maybe I've missed it. I haven't heard anything much about that. I, is it is it um, intrinsic to? Is it is it within awareness? Is it is it just a sort of a part of awareness? I, I think it, it, it is part of uh, that, the more accepting and allowing part of, of right mindfulness. Um, to, be a, to be willing to just be with what's there rather than trying to make it go away or make it be different, I think has an intrinsic sort of kindness to it. And sometimes um, it can be helpful to make that more explicit. Sometimes I, I think in terms of dialing up the, the uh, if I recognize that there's a version in the mind and particularly um, some self judgment or aversion to the aversion, then um, I might think about um, yeah, dialing up those sorts of qualities that really support uh, meta, support me being with experience. Um, so patience, um, acceptance, allowing those sorts of those sorts of qualities. Um, but sometimes, um, like we've been doing with the resourcing practices, that their recognition that sometimes the, the mind just needs a little bit of um, of help <laughs> to 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 be a mind that um, can we we can engage with with mindfulness, it needs a little bit extra on the, the meta side or the pleasure side or the beauty side. Um, yeah, so that's where I, I think just just working out what 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 would support um, being aware, and sometimes that's that's more kindness or that's more um, yeah the, the the kindly spaciousness. Um, we, we so we can definitely bring it in in those ways. Or, or using the hand, or using the body, um, yeah, because it is, um, I mentioned that, you know, working at the coal face of our being, because we, we rarely sort of look directly at um, our own experience, particularly our experience uh, of dukkha, and so that, that takes a it's it's a it's a big ask, and I think recognizing that in in ourselves is is helpful. Like, yeah, this is not a small thing that we're doing by, um, yeah, just looking more directly at what's happening. Mm. 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 Yeah, thanks for asking the question. Okay, so we'll just have one or two more and then we'll have a break. Um, Vilasani, I can see you waving. <laughs> I don't know how to put up that yellow hand. <laughs> I'll have to get advice on that. <laughs> if there's anything I've learned on this retreat is to stop speculating about what I think is going to happen because it's invariably wrong and it's not just that it's it's that if i do 
stop trying to guess what, oh, this is going to be awful because of um, last night I didn't get to sleep until five in the morning. So I thought, oh, I'll feel terrible the next day. And then, of course, this is the next day. And I, I felt quite bad at the very beginning. But amazingly, just a few minutes of meditation, and I was fine. And also, I thought it would help to sip some tea. And I, I found I had yesterday's tea left in a cup. And I thought, oh, I can heat that up in a few seconds, and that'll be fine. Well, it's awful, absolutely <laughs> ghastly. <laughs> Don't try yesterday's tea. <laughs> but but um, also with tea, when we were doing that standing meditation, um, I did have some fresh tea near me. And when I started to feel like, oh dear, I, 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 I've got to sit down or whatever, I took a sip of tea and it just, it, I just felt fine. And I thought, what on earth have I put in this tea? <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of placebo that was really, really working. And I managed to stand the whole time. Mm -hmm. I took four, <laughs> four sips of tea. <laughs> I know we were supposed to be still, but I thought, well, I'd rather just try and make it. <laughs> in my oh, own way. <laughs> I want some of that tea. <laughs> Can you send me some? <laughs> yes, but yeah. the thing is, it's so much more enjoyable to wait and see and then notice what's happening instead of speculating. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. being greedy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, if if we'd have had more a little bit more time, we would have talked more about moha delusion, and yeah. um, one of uh, the things favorite little things I took from Sayadaw Utejani in Burma. He he says um, assumption, presumption, and speculation are always the work of moha, oh, and okay. that comes to me very often <laughs> uh, because because it's. It's, it's it's us taking a sort of best guess. Uh, mm. I, I wonder what will happen, or oh, perhaps it will be. Yeah, in some in some ways, it's it's fair enough. But we can we can buy it. We can create a world through our assumptions or through presuming that something will be like a meeting with, you know, tricky communication is going to be awful or. Um, mm. Yeah, that a bad night's sleep will um, will will feel terrible. Or um, the the one that was there for me in, in Burma was assuming that my migraines would always last three days, would be three days of strong pain. And I remember Ute Janir saying, "You don't know that. You just don't know that." And you know, I felt like saying, "Well, I've had about twenty years of experience." <laughs> of it. But it it sort of stopped me in my tracks yes. as as oh. It, it is a, an assumption and okay so it is based on experience but how about just being present with what's happening right now mm. uh, otherwise you we sort of make the experience i make the experience of a, a migrant into um, just a set of concepts and ideas mm. that don't necessarily correspond to the direct experience or they drive the direct experience in a certain direction yeah. uh, rather yeah. than you know, the practice is sort of in a way letting the experience lead and um, not, you know, not make it the sort of second level reality of our thoughts and ideas and opinions and assumptions, not making that the sort of primary um, lead, but, but you know, more in service to the direct experience. Yeah, yeah. Good. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's just so much more enjoyable. And also, it's the whole experience is so much fuller. Somehow, That's you're right. not limited to what you think is going to happen. Mm. And what really happens is much more expansive and much more interesting. <laughs> Great.
Great. Thank you. You're an inspiration to us all, Vilasani, I think. Your zest for life and your zest for practice and uh, being willing to experiment and explore. So thank you. So how about we have a, a little bit of a break, um, come back at maybe five past 12, and then um, just got a couple of things to say and we'll end with a, uh, a sit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still getting used to the um, the other mic. I was on mute. <laughs> so uh, uh, I've got two ways to get mixed up about muting and unmuting myself now. Um, yeah, so I want to say something about Dana, and uh, then I'm going to hand over to Vajra Priya, who's got uh, things, a couple of things to say about the rest of the day and an email he's sending out. Um, yeah, so thank you to to those of you that have have already given um, for this retreat. Thank you very much. It's much much appreciated. Uh, so I just wanted to say my my own situation is such that I um, I feel very privileged to be able to support myself uh, to offer the Dharma in various ways, um, which has included writing uh, my book over the last couple of years and, and hopefully some more writing in the future, but largely through through teaching. And I support myself or I am supported through um, through retreat centers uh, who who give Dana or a fee to to have me teach and some friends, uh, friends and students who who give regularly, um, particularly grateful to them. And I hope to carry on being able to do so. Um, in the last couple of years, the retreat centers have not been in, in a position to either run retreats or to, to offer dana to people who teach there. So um, yeah, but they're, they're starting to be able to do so again. But actually online retreats have made a big <coughs> difference uh, to me. Um, so that that's my situation that's that's where i'm at and uh so this is a dana retreat which means that uh, there is no set amount um, that's being asked from you um there's yeah you are free to give completely what you would like to give what you can uh, and if you're not able to give anything at this time that's fine too um, I'm just very grateful and appreciative of whatever uh, is given that allows me to continue uh, to the extent that I can to, to give the Dharma. So um, you've probably seen the link in a couple of different places. There's a, a link to give via PayPal. I don't think you need to have a PayPal account to give via PayPal. You do. No, you don't. <laughs> Such an Andy's going yes and Bad Free is going no. <laughs> um, so um, uh, yeah. So um, there's a link on the the page with all the information. The link where you get onto this um, Zoom account. There's also a link to the Donna and also on the Padlet. Um, so that's yeah. That's that's all I want to say. Um, thank you. So I'm going to hand over to Vajra Priya and try and mute myself in the right places. So there. On the computer. Okay. Um, yes, so just a couple of things to say. One is about the groups this afternoon. So there's the opportunity to um, report in 
have a final check in, check out. Um, so that'll work as it did on the first day all that time ago. So I ask you to turn up at 3.45, um, just to open up this page and then you can walk away for 15 minutes and then the groups start at four o'clock. Um, originally what we said is that the groups are for people who are having reviews. Um, it got a bit complicated in the past trying to work out groups for people who weren't having reviews. Anyway, um, we've relented because there's quite a few of you who are not having reviews, but might want to have a bit of a check-in at the end. Um, if, if you're in that position, then just turn up, just turn up at 3.45 and we'll either put you in a group with, um, in one of the existing groups, or if there's enough of you, we'll put you together in a, a group. So turn up 3.45. Please don't turn up just before four o'clock, especially if you're in that category, because it might get a bit complicated. Um, so 3.45, log in, go away and make a cup of tea, come back at four. Um, if you aren't going to be in the check-in group, then the afternoon session starts a bit later at 5.15, 5.15. So that's the one thing. The other thing is to do with, um, well, Vajra Devi is hopefully going to offer more online retreats like this. Yay, if she's encouraged. <laughs> and um, initially these evolved just as a sort of response to to COVID and we just kind of threw it all together. But maybe it'll become more of an ongoing thing. Um, and if that's the case, it's really helpful to get feedback from you about what works and what doesn't work, what we could do better. So I would like to send you a, a feedback form, um, which I'll do um, sometime later on today or tomorrow morning. So it's just a request really um, to fill that in and just let us learn so that we can we can do this better and better and also there's a little question in there about what kind of format would be helpful in the future so anyway if you get an email from me with a link to a feedback form be very grateful if you could fill that in don't tell vajra davy this but there'll also be a link to a a, a thank you card if you want to fill in a, a thank you card for her <laughs> um okay is that everything i think so yeah, there'll, there'll be lots of other links to resources and tell you what's, what's happening about the resources, but I don't need to tell you that now. Okay, that's enough from me. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so let's spend the time up until lunch, um, a short sit. Um, hmm. Yeah, I've got a, a reading I'd like to, to read a poem, but I'd also like to lead into... Uh, I'm, I'm going to just lead into um, something that the reading may come later. Um, and I'm, I'm borrowing from Salvatanyana here, uh, not something that she's, she's done on this particular retreat, um, but something that for, through listening to her uh, recordings of the relaxation and yoga nidra. So I hope it's all right to take it out of its full context here and just drop it in as a start to the retreat so if you'd like to sit uh, and, and maybe i'll read the reading at the end because it is quite nice
So this is called heart body breathing. So just taking a few moments just to settle into your experience, particularly experience of the body, tactile sensations. Of the breath within the body. Allowing the breath to relax you into the body. Or if it works better the other way, allow relaxing into the body to connect you in a very light way with the breath. Relaxing into an awareness, the body breath. And then just using your imagination very lightly. Imagine breathing into your heart. And breathing in through all angles onto your heart. So behind the heart, through the sides, through the rib cage, from above and below. Breathing into the heart and breathing out through the heart. Again, through all angles to the furthest parts of your being. Breathing into the heart. And breathing out through the heart to the furthest parts, perhaps of your body, but perhaps your being extends beyond the physical body. And in your own time, to the extent that feels beneficial and helpful, just doing that heart body breathing. And you may like to just continue with this practice in a very open, light way for the next 10 minutes or so. Or you might wish to uh, let some aspect of the heart, body, breath to be an anchor from which you open up to whatever else is happening in your experience.
It's not that I hear the birds, it's just hearing the birds. Let yourself be hearing, thinking, seeing. It is the false sense of I that interrupts the wonder with a constant desire to think about I. And all the while the wonder is occurring. The birds sing. The cars go by. The body sensations continue. The heart is beating. Life is a second by second miracle. But dreaming our eye dreams, we miss it. So hopefully see you, see you all later and have a good afternoon, have a good afternoon's practice.